Hello, everyone. Hey, thank you so much for coming out today. Uh, yeah, my name is Rob Banke, and I'm the CEO of NuGet. Uh, at NuGet, we are creating and working towards an open source future. And so today, I'm going to talk about sort of the present um, as well as the future of where we see the world of open source going. Before we get started, let's talk about what the heck open source even is. So this is a, uh, uh, I mean, it's been around for many, many decades in the development community. Uh, in the 90s, it was called the free software movement. Um, then it needed a, there was a certain group within the open source community that thought that it needed a bit of a, of a, of a marketing branding push. So they actually branded it as open source. And then we've heard about um, these different acronyms. So we have OSS, FOSS, and my favorite, FLOSS. Uh, you have open source software, you have free and open source software, and then you also have free and open source software, but the L in this case stands, you know, in the English language, free has two different meanings. You can have something that doesn't cost anything, but then free also insinuates freedom. So the Spanish and French word libre, or libre, I know I'm not, not pronouncing that right, but um, that is what it came from. And so, you know, at the end of the day, if you are watching the news, if you're reading, you know, what's going on in the world, it can kind of seem like a scary place from time to time. Uh, but I'm here today to tell you that there are tools being given to people fighting against tyranny, people fighting against, um, you know, radical regimes, and they're doing it through the use of open source and free software. So, in the headlines, there are different ways and uh, there's different things happening in the headlines today that can be solved with tools being used on open source. So right now, if anyone here lives in California, there are a lot of different, uh, you know, PG&E is shutting down different electrical uh, sections, uh, you know, of all of California. And so there's actually an open source solution out there called the Open Smart Grid platform. And so there's different people who have been getting their power shut down, and now they have the ability, by installing this software, they have the ability to choose if, uh, if their power is coming from PG&E or several other sources. So they don't need, all of a sudden now, with this tool, you don't need to ask PG&E where you get your power from. Now, there's a lot of other things going in, in here, but you know, this is really important. Uh, right now, What's going on in California is not sustainable, and when you have just one company that runs all the electricity, that's a single point of failure. Now, it seems like every week there are more and more whistleblowers coming out. And, you know, I just got done reading the Edward Snowden documentary. I know that he's a very uh, de uh, divisive figure. But I will say that he had the tools, and people are being given the tools now to be able to not be monitored, uh, achieve full privacy in their communications. And this is the reason why Snowden and many other whistleblowers were even capable of having conversations like this. And it came from Tor, all right? Tor is an open source browser uh, and a privacy mechanism. I won't get too deep diving into Tor, but the idea is that you can now have an open source, a free browser to use where you just won't be able to get spied on. But also in the headlines just last week, I mean, once again, the Argentine peso is in free fall. So entire economies are collapsing. And I feel like I probably don't need to talk too far into a solution that is open source because there's this thing called the Bitcoin protocol that we're all pretty familiar with. So, once again, you have something massive that's changing the world for the worse, and you have an open source solution that's able to actually solve quite a lot. And so I don't need to get into why Bitcoin's important. A lot of people know this, but it's a non-sovereign currency. It's not dedicated to a specific government, and it's censorship resistant. It'd be very difficult for any government to actually shut it down. Last but not least, I wanted to talk about what's going on in Hong Kong. So violent protests continue to happen in Hong Kong. And 
As opposed to identifying one open source tool, which I will go into, I will also talk about what is being dubbed as the open source protest movement or open source activism within Hong Kong. So there is an app called LIHKG that protesters are using. Now, the government cannot censor this. What it's set up is sort of like Reddit. So on Reddit, you have a headline, and then you can upvote it or downvote it. So protesters are able to communicate throughout their entire community, and basically what's happening is this is allowing a decentralized autonomous uh, community, you know, cooperation to happen, where the only way that decisions are being made is that the consent is that consensus is being decided utilizing this messaging app and utilizing how many votes different aspects are being built on. So when you think about all that could potentially be perceived as wrong in the world, the more and more you look at it, there are open source development tools that will enable this to happen. Now on top of this, I will say that 92% of every single application that exists in the world is built utilizing open source components. And so in general, this is why last year we started a company called Nougat. And it's evolved. Uh, Nougat is the incentivized open source development network. And this is launching at the end of the year. Please, uh, anyone that's not aware of it, please uh, sign up for the alpha. And at Nougat, what we're enabling are people around the world to be paid proper US dollars for utilizing and developing and coding open source. Go figure. So what we're gonna do is if this one person uh, uh, wants to create a, an end-to-end -end encryption directed direct messaging in a particular open source protocol, this person's gonna be able to crowdfund his developer capabilities. He's gonna be able to also just potentially say to the community, hey, we wanna have this made, who wants to pay for this? So this idea came out of us winning the EOS San Francisco Global Hackathon last year. Um, all right. <laughs> I see a lot of friendly, familiar faces from that moment. And yeah, so since that moment, we've really evolved, especially with the team as well. So quick update. Actually, a lot of people in the room are not aware of this. So our team right now, yeah, myself as CEO, uh, Moa Yash, who uh, spent six years at Google, He's our CTO, he's been helping build out the entire infrastructure. He's also the, the brother of Ali Ayash from Lumios. Uh, our smart contract developer is Thomas from EOS Bet. Uh, a lot of people in this room know Fred. We all love Fred Madrid. Uh, yeah, go Fred. Um, and then we have some great advisors along the way working with us. Um, so at the end of the day, I just want to talk about here, so uh, a bunch of different incentive models that exist in open source. We're bringing them into one platform. So, you know, there are some corporations that utilize, uh, 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 that will pay their developers for 20% of their time to be dedicated to developing open source. We want those to be coming in to NuGet. And every single person, every single stakeholder that you see here is gonna be given points, not tokens. You're not gonna be able to move them around. You're given points. And with those points, I actually ended up spending uh, seven years of my life, I spent building um, an organic food company. It was my first exit in 2013. And at that time, I learned a lot about cooperatives. And the moment that I learned about farming cooperatives and worker cooperatives, I also realized when looking at open source, they have developers around the world who are not paid for their time and energy. And so that's why we're going to be giving back a percentage of Nougat's proceeds back to the community based upon how many points that you have in our ecosystem. So the more good you do for Nougat, the more money that you can potentially make. And if that doesn't matter to you, if you're a developer that's like, I'm just doing it for all the right reasons besides being paid, um, that money can be redirected to the project of your choosing. So we won the... Uh, uh, the, the, the hackathon with this idea of a decentralized GitHub. Uh, right now, there's a lot of GitHub uh, countries that are being sanctioned. So it's a bit meta, but the first project launching on our NuGet platform is to help the community build the NuGet D-Repo platform, which will be a decentralized GitHub solution. 
These are the milestones for how it's built out. Basically, our platform will enable it so that developers and uh, community members are incentivized along every single milestone. This just gives you an example of how we're doing that. So anyway, that's it for me. Please sign up at nougat.io, and thank you so much for your time.